Hey everyone, welcome back to the first episode, official episode where we actually talk about something, you know, of our new season after a long while of not filming, not recording, not posting anything. So, uh, today's topic is going to be about climate change and basically like everything I have to do with climate change, explaining it and everything. Today with me, I have Ali and I. Um, what's up? I'm really excited about today's topic. It's it's pretty important, especially with what's going on right now. Unfortunately, not a lot of people think that way. A lot of people tend to assume that it's not that big of a deal, but it is a big of a deal. And especially here in Erbil, we are really feeling the effects of climate change. Exactly. Like I wanted to bring that up. Uh, I remember, like, if our parents, for example. Back in Erbil, it would literally snow, you know? It would, like, snow up to, like, knee height, you know? Yeah. As crazy as that may be to believe. And now, Ali, when was the last time we had snow up to, like, ankle height here? Never, to be honest with you. Never, Uh, yeah, exactly. Literally never, exactly. Not just Erbil, even, like, the other cities of Kurdistan. Okay, so before we talk about this topic any further, before we discuss any more about this, explain exactly what climate change is so if i could introduce and define the topic for us okay um climate change is when humans influence the climate and increase earth's temperature by their activities so those activities are burning fossils cutting down forests and farming livestock these things cause gas emissions and the two main gases are co2 and methane these are powerful gases if released in huge amounts they could cause the earth's temperature to increase which is what is causing the ice caps to melt which is why um we haven't had snow in hauler for years so yeah for those who don't know co2 is carbon dioxide (laughs) and methane ch4 uh basically why does it matter if the polar ice caps melt or not? So there's this thing called like ocean currents or wind currents, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, basically, these the flow of these requires the change in temperatures. So it requires cold water to be brought in and hot water to be brought out. As you know, hot water and cold water have different densities. The moment the Earth's temperature decides to rise by one degree Celsius, one degree only, all of that water current will stop. What that's going to cause is many cities will be flooded. Temperature of like the whole world will change. Climate will not remain the same. What once used to be a tropical area will soon become a desert. What once used to be a desert might just freeze and become an inhabit- even less inhabitable. Yeah, that is like a, that's a huge problem. I know not a lot of people really care about this, unfortunately, um, but it is a problem because like you have to think of the future and exactly and yeah, the problem is we we tend to think it only affects marine life oh the fish oh the polar bears oh the penguins but really the main people suffering here is us because what this is going to do it's going to destroy cities it's going to destroy landscape it's going to destroy a lot more than we can even imagine and this is just what we have perceived this is just we have like what we have accounted for we don't even know how much more there is that we have unaccounted right i just wanted to say that um if you've noticed the fish are dying and the species are decreasing and taking over instead are lots and lots of jellyfish i noticed that um i read that once that that is evidence that the world is changing and it's going you know it's changing for the worse so if you've ever been on a cruise or if you've ever been to Istanbul and you've noticed, if you looked at the water, you'll notice there's a lot of jellyfish in every trip. Like if you've been there in 2014 and then in 2020 again, you'll notice that the amount of jellyfish is increasing. So it is getting progressively worse. That is actually quite true because I do remember I was in like Norway and I noticed like the water had like, like a coastal water is not supposed to have that much jellyfish. You know, jellyfish are supposed to inhabit, like, you know, the deeper lever, uh, levels of the ocean, you know? Not only that, even this year, we have a problem in Hauled, in the entire, like, region. 
um, if you've noticed, we don't have a lot of water, like groundwater. We're also losing that, and that's also an effect of climate change. Are we going to talk about, like, this year? We, I think we only, like, it only rained, like, five times. I don't think we've experienced winter this year. Like, we should, like, I don't know why, but it just felt like it was, like, an extended spring, and spring felt like an extended summer. Exactly. Like, our winters are usually freezing cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Winters are, you know, you'd think as us as individuals, you know, we're not really affected by if there's a freezing winter or a really hot summer, we have ACs, you know, it's not really going to affect our day that much. But if you think about the farmers and the people that live off the soils, you know, this this affects their livestock and their vegetation. And then that's really terrible for them because if we have a year with without rain or limited rain, they're not going to get much crops. And then they're going to starve and their livestock are going to starve and we're going to have to export and import more. Exactly. The biggest problem with the fact that people don't care about climate change is the fact that they don't think it's going to affect them. Like they think, oh, it's just, oh, it's just the environment changing a bit. It's going to affect us in 100, 200 years. But the effects that you will see in 100, 200 years are irreversible, magnified effects. It's it's not anywhere near to what we're seeing already. Yeah, Um. based on what you said, uh, uh, extending on your scenario, these farmers are essentially growing the food that you consume. And if you don't really think of them... Think of yourselves. That's simple. <laughs> think, think of yourselves. Yeah, exactly. What will you eat? if they can't grow anything. It's not like we can import and export everything here. Obviously, what if, let's say, the borders of the nations that are surrounding us will all of a sudden decide to close? Exactly. We've had that happen several times, over and over. So Yeah, exactly. It's not like we can trust the import and export process. I mean, we're not going to export anything in that case. We're just going to import. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. The reason a lot of people, there's two main reasons people don't really tend to care. It's, first of all, when something huge is happening that involves a lot of people, technically and psychologically speaking, the blame sort of diffuses. So if it was just one person to blame, that person could easily feel the guilt and they could easily feel the need to contribute or, or even if it was just a small group of people but because it is the whole world us individuals especially us in third world countries feel like we're not that much to blame and that we can't really do much to contribute which is the second reason we feel like okay well even if we do care what can we do you know as as individuals even if i take yeah. um shorter showers if i you know, take public transport. If I go vegetarian, how is that going to, you know, impact? How is that going to erase the effect of entire industries? So those are the two main reasons people, you know, tend to not care. Yeah, I mean, to add on to that, for example, we have people like uh, the Kardashians who technically hate using plastic bottles but do not have any problem going on trips with their private jets. Uh, see, the problem is here. We have like fake activism going on. Like even companies will give you the illusion that the whole problem falls upon you as a consumer. For example, turn the light bulb off when you leave the room because that's going to worsen climate change a lot. But they're not going to talk about how the amount of oil and gas they use in a day is 10 times worse than what you do. And that they don't even care about that. And they're just trying to deflect responsibility. See, I I respect that thought process. I really do. But I just, I don't agree with that. I, I don't think it's about who is to blame, but rather what you can do to help. And I think, yes, these are industries and these are businesses that are causing all of this. You know, that is, you know, they are the ones that are causing the majority of the gas emissions. However, their products are bought by us these industries are made up of individuals. If we as individuals use, um, you know, okay, if we you know, decide to turn off the lights every time or take shorter showers or go vegetarian, yes, that's not going to erase the effects of the entire 
of what happened in climate change, but it will help because these industries are going to realize that that is the demand, that the demand for things that affect the, the earth mm -hmm. are less and the demand for things that are more clean and are vegan products, that, that is going to increase. Okay, yeah, you're right. I completely forgot about like economics and how like the consumer basically controls the market with their demands. I mean, that is that is a problem as well. That's like the majority of the problem, in my yeah. opinion. So it all comes down to us. It all comes down to citizens, people like us, what we demand. If we demand that uh, we start creating rec like recyclable products or uh, use biodegradable substances in general. Biodegradable substances, exactly. Or make fridges and uh, ACs without using carbon fluorocarbons, you know? I, I, I completely forgot the name, but it's CFCs, right? CF CFS? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm also not being as eloquent as possible. It's really hard to find the correct terms for these things. Yeah, it doesn't matter. At least we're like addressing the main point. Yeah, I mean, as you said, I like we can't really play the blame game for this like life changing topic, literally and metaphorically speaking. Like if we blame industries, we are the reason these industries are growing so we can't really blame them uh for being like the majority on the effect of climate change like they're not really the ones that are subjected to be blamed for climate change yeah, but yeah we're yeah. not trying to blame anyone and trying to save the world you know we're trying to save ourselves so that this generation survives and that the next generation doesn't just so survive but thrive again like our ancestors did okay i guess another problem with this issue with this topic is the fact that we think every solution takes a lot of time to work you know that's not really the case if, if we remember like the worldwide lockdown you know not just on a national scale but every single country in the world practically went under lockdown during the lockdown just a few days through we heard the news that the ozone layer was finally starting to heal for the first time since like 1970s and that was just a wondrous moment like just in a matter of a few days ozone layer started healing and that makes you think that makes you think just if just within a few days if we stopped consuming so much if the world came together just how much of climate change we'd be able to reverse. Yeah, we can do this right now as a society and as a city together. We can use less public transport. We could waste less water. We could choose vegetarian options. You don't understand how much consuming animal products affects the climate. Exactly. Livestock, livestock releases methane when they d digest their food. When you when you're growing livestock, you're cutting down forests, forests that consume CO2. You're increasing both CO2 and methane. You know, it's it is incredibly harmful. It is yeah. incredibly harmful. Rainforests are being cut down at an incredibly alarming rate. Exactly. And in my opinion, I think livestock and cutting down the forest is an even are even bigger causes than burning a fossil fuel i think picking vegetarian options or even going vegan is more important than yeah and just to like further like you know explain this it's not about like we're not trying to force anyone to like go vegan or go vegetarian or whatever but we need to stop the mass demand for companies to produce all sorts of meat and to bring them into like stores every single week you know i mean because that's where the problem is. It's the mass production, the mass, like the need for uh, meat is way too high that is forcing these companies to create uh, large scale farms with thousands, thousands of animals in the same space, releasing all of that methane. But Ahmed, that's kind of difficult, like especially here in the region in Kurdistan, the Kurdish diet, like it has a lot of meat. Let's be honest, it's, it's a fact we cannot hide. Yeah, but but the thing is, Ali, the thing is, Kurdistan, only in the past, like, 50 years, I'd say, we've been able to have, like, large-scale companies that produce meat, right, like that. 
Yeah, exactly. Right? We could return back to that way where it was just like, you know, something special to have meat. That wasn't so bad. I I just wanted to say that the Kurdish diet has not always been always so heavily rich in meat and animal products. Like I remember my dad would always say um that he would when he was growing up, he would only have meat once a week or when his family had guests coming over and stuff. It was it was really just for special occasions and you could survive without meat. We're not telling the people listening right now that you must go vegan or you must go vegetarian but i think you should just be mindful of the things you put on your body and the effects they have not just on your body but on your environment so what i realize like during this podcast throughout all of this time that really we control all of that goes on that really it's under our hands like all it takes is a few lifestyle changes a few changes in our mindset realizing some education really like a few steps to bring about such great change in the world i mean to be fair like throughout the majority of this episode we just mentioned the problems we haven't really thought of solutions it's not like we can't think of like extremely detailed solutions we actually did think of solutions the solution is that society should lessen the demand for products that less that in- are causing climate change you can't do anything else these are the only solutions by the way by the way we're kind of lucky given our situation for example fast food in western countries is your cheapest option isn't it yeah it's like a, a dollar for a burger or something but here it's the complete opposite fast food is your most expensive option pretty much you'd have to pay like uh 10 just to get a burger right okay that, not really like no at one of the fast food chains like for example you'd pay 10 dollars to get a burger or pepsi oh, or okay. and a small like yeah true. couple of sauces right yeah meanwhile the vegetarian option were like you'd buy for example spinach and those things it would be much much cheaper you'd barely spend 10k at a grocery store to give yourself enough food for 3 days the problem is even the fast food chains here like the international fast food chains Obviously people know what they are. We don't really need to mention them. Yeah. They don't have like let's say vegetarian or vegan options here. Exactly, but they do in other countries. Yeah. I mean, I think they should everywhere, not just like be specific. You try to help the environment and your health. I don't think you should be looking to fast food restaurants. Yeah. You can not look for vegetarian options. I mean, Ahmed, like what you said earlier, you're right. Like combining your idea with Ayaz like not going to fast food places in the first place um you can simply go to your local grocery store or farmers market you can use a tote bag instead of plastic bags you can buy fresh fruits and vegetables the amazing thing with the solutions for the problem which is climate change is that you're solving many other problems with the same solution exactly like for example if we promote healthier eating not only are we defeating climate change we're also promoting a better mental health because i'm sure you guys are aware that what you put in your body affects your mental health as well i mean mental and physical, physical health or pro- we're prolonging human life if we're not even prolonging human life then we're bettering it you know yeah uh along on top of that we're defeating growing issues such as uh the amount of eating disorders becoming like popular and like and all of that is due to like fast food chains fashion you know all of that is being promoted by these fashion industries by these fast food industries industries are like eating disorders on both sides whether it whether it be anorexia or bulimia or binge eating or anything all of these are being promoted by the same harmful industries that are causing climate change so if we start to defeat climate change we're also defeating a lot of other concerning issues these are very good solutions they're very simple like you can do it very easily um the problem is if you look at it at the bigger picture what will doctors that are like let's say nutritionists or you know people that are related to that field also the industries how about those people that's why the process is slow remember earlier you said um i mean like it the thing is the thing is it's it's it takes time it's slow to bring all of humanity together and start changing the way we live but but 
the thing is, it's not slow the moment humanity starts to get together. Like last year, like the lockdown and everything. But um, we definitely need to start appreciating the earth that we live on, this mother nature, you know? I just believe, like, for example, we can start promoting a healthier lifestyle. Uh, for example, Ali, uh, when I was in Netherlands, it was, it, was, it was shocking, the amount of bicycles. Did you know they had, like, specific garages? Like, garages, like, like three-story garages, three levels, just for bicycles. So, wait, did you just say three-story levels? Yes, three-story garages just for bicycles. That's how much bicycles and, like the usage of less cars is being promoted in such countries. And also, like, um, there's, like, this new law from the EU. Um, by 2030, I think, you can't use any other car other than electric cars anymore. Which is Yeah, uh, that's the thing. In Germany, for example, every, like, I believe it's, like, every four years, they update the standard for cars. Yeah. Basically, anyone who has a car that doesn't use this specific type of diesel or this specific type of gas that is less harmful yeah. is going to be banned is going to be you know fined or whatever and i believe that's like a very good solution you reminded me of something that will like be very successful here you know in germany uh, yeah you know in uh, germany i think it's in germany i'm not entirely sure it's either in austria or germany yeah it's like you get paid for the trash that you throw yeah you do you do like for example the plastic bottles it's like this machine, you put them inside for recycling and you're going to get like a few cents back per bottle. That will be extremely successful here. The thing is, here's the thing. These few countries are just an example. Like, it's, it's, it goes to show that it is not impossible to reverse these effects. And it is completely possible. And it's easy to do so. To reverse the harmful effects of climate change and, and all the other issues mentioned during this podcast. Exactly. However, another problem that we have going on is the fact that people don't listen to scientists, that people, for example, we have in the U.S., many people believing that climate change is a hoax, that it's not real. Or the fact that Earth is flat and not spherical. The Earth is flat. Like, we have certain things going on that need major re-education. We need to start re-educating, and that all starts with each other. We start, we communicate with each other, you know? Ali, as you said, a bigger picture, but the bigger picture is made up of little tiny dots, and those tiny dots are us. Those tiny dots come together and make a picture, you know? Yeah, what you said, I mean, you know me. I always blame it on the education system. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, you can easily teach children at a very young age to live a sustainable sustainable life, like, you know, not experiencing climate change. And, <laughs> and obviously, uh, this topic climate change is interconnected with a lot of other topics. For example, the economic system, the fashion industries, the eating industries, which will all be talked about in future episodes. I was just going to say, um, to conclude, the title of this episode says, who can we really blame for the effects of climate change? Businesses, ourselves, or a combination of both? The answer is, we don't really care. We're not here to blame anyone. We're not, it's not about blame. It's about taking responsibility. When you take responsibility, you take the power back from the people whose fault it was and you use it to fix things. It's not, so it doesn't really exactly. matter who's fault it is. Well, thank you all for joining us today. It was great having you. A pleasure to have you guys back. Yeah. And um, see you guys next week. Bye-bye. See you guys next episode. Goodbye. Uh, do you want to say goodbye? Yeah, I already said bye. Ha <laughs> ha